Hello, lords and ladies of the internet, and welcome to another update video with me, Grey Hunter, where we'll be talking about the state of the channel, future projects, all that sort of cool stuff, milestones that we've accomplished, woo, and uh, playing a game in the background that I enjoy to pass the time, so you're not looking at, you know, blank screens or something like that. Something interesting so that you guys can enjoy while you listen to my pontifications. <laughs> So, uh, in this instance, we'll be playing a game that I quite enjoy. I've considered doing an LP of it, but I'm not sure how you guys would react to it. It's very simulatory, but I enjoy it. I have a lot of fun with it. It is called Scourge of War Gettysburg, and it is, well, it's about Gettysburg. The name kind of says it all. <laughs> so, uh, in this case, we are on the first day of Gettysburg. We're coming up on McPherson's Ridge. And we are playing as Major General Harry Heath, under the command of A.P. Hill in the 3rd Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. And as A.P. Hill has told us, you may continue your attack against the Federal Militia to your front and move into the town. Be advised that the Commanding General, Robert E. Lee, does not wish a general engagement at this time. Well, as we all know, Gettysburg is a thing. It happens. Unfortunately for Harry Heath, he's going to sort of start the whole thing off. But that's okay. So uh, this game is quite fun. It's very simulatory, as I said. And it's quite fun because it actually has a mode where you can command from the saddle. So you can only see what your commanding general in the particular scenario can see. Quite cool. It also has this, which is a courier message system. So we can send a message to AP Hill if we wanted to, but he won't. He doesn't have anything to give us, so there's no point. Uh, we can send messages to our subordinates, we can even send them to individual regiments if we so chose, but we're not going to. What we are going to do first, though, is we're going to send a message to General Archer. We can tell him to execute the following orders, and probe the enemy to his front. Because, and this is kind of using meta-knowledge, I know what's coming, because I am a student of history, it is my major at university, which incidentally is something that we need to talk about. <laughs> and, um, well, I know that Archer's going to get captured today, or he's going to die, one of the two, and things are not going to go well, because he's not facing what he thinks he's facing. So we're going to probe the enemy to the front, and with our friend over here, Joseph R. Davis, who is our other commander, he's over on our left, he is, well, he hasn't really got much fame for doing anything, actually, he's, um, he's rather lackluster. He didn't succeed fantastically, and he didn't fail miserably during the Civil War, so he's kind of uh, very average. So we're going to order him to move to a certain map point, we're going to order him to move to where he currently is now, we're going to tell him to face his unit to the, the southeast, I think. That should be right, that should be the map orientation. Tell him to face southeast and change his unit to brigade form line. That should do it for now. I will probably take personal command of his brigade soon, uh, because we're playing a very small scenario where there aren't actually all that many units on the field. So I will get to the update thing in a minute. I just want to take care of this beforehand, because if we don't, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. So we're going to order this artillery battery to move up to here. We're going to order Charles Grandy. And this is taking command from the AI. So the AI will uh, refuse to move sometimes, which is unfortunate. So I would really like it if it moved. We're going to order him to move his artillery battery up there. We're going to order Captain Lewis to move his artillery into this field. Turn it about a bit. There we go. And we're going to order Captain Davis, I think. More. <laughs> I don't know why I thought Davis. We're going to order him to move his battery over there. Right. And then we're going to go back to Harry Heath. Oops, that's Hill. And we're going to move up a little bit. There we go. Oh, we've got a message from Archer. So, Archer is off on our right. He held, he's got a dubious distinction in Civil War history. He's the first general officer in the Army of Northern Virginia to get captured. And it happens today. General Heath, the militia seems to be withdrawing. My brigade is advanced just short of the elevator, which is my right. He means this. 
and is far in advance of any support that you may offer. I find the terrain to be difficult, and my command will be divided by the woods to my front. He means this. And he's right. He's he's very far ahead. He's not going to get much support in the way of uh, troops from Heath. Unless we get lucky, you can get Pettigrew and Brockenborough, who are the other two brigades in Heath's command, to show up. It can happen. It doesn't happen very often, but it can. And if they do, then Archer's probably going to be okay. He will still get captured. Over on our left here, we've got um, Davis. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. General Heath, this is not militia. They were flying the colors of the 1st Cavalry Division. And now John Reynolds' 1st Corps, Army of the Potomac. The situation is very confusing. So, uh, during the first day, Johnston Pettigrew, who is one of Heath's uh, brigade commanders, reported that he found cavalry facing him in Gettysburg, or at least near Gettysburg. He thought it was cavalry. Um, Hill dismisses this. He says, nah, Pettigrew don't know what he's talking about. He don't know shit. Unfortunately, Pettigrew did know what he was talking about, and Harry Heath walks straight into the two dismounted brigades of John Buford, or Buford, I don't know how you say his name. I'd say Buford. Unfortunately for Heath, once he adjusts to this tactical reality and sends forth two brigade instead, it's too late. John Reynolds has already come up, and John Reynolds has deployed the Iron Brigade and Lysander Cutler's Brigade. Lysander Cutler is over here. I think this is actually some of his troops. And the Iron Brigade is coming through these woods. I don't think that's them. I think that's some of the Archer's troops. Yeah, that's some of the Archer's guys. But uh, Cutler and Long Soul Meredith are going to stop Harry Heath short, but John Reynolds will die, unfortunately for him. So we've, we've made our orders, we don't really need to worry about uh, commanding anything else right now, everything's pretty much just going to go as planned. I might take command of Davis, because he's not doing anything. He's a very defensive general, which is unfortunate, but he's, he's not the guy we need in command. We need us in command, so we're going to send him up against one of Cutler's regiments. And we're going to try and drive them off. We don't actually have to hold McPherson's Ridge. We just have to make it to it. And we'll get the victory points. And then we can swerve to our right. And hopefully if Archer hasn't been completely and utterly decimated by the Iron Brigade, we'll be able to save him. We could get lucky. Archer might be able to push these guys out of the farm. But you never know. Anywho. On to the update stuff. Because that is what you're here for. Update things. So, uh, we recently made it to 2,000 subs. Oh, the sound of that cannon, that's beautiful. So we recently made it to 2,000 subs. Woohoo! Go team! We did it. I remember it wasn't that long ago that I was doing an update for 1,000. You guys are amazing. I'm glad that you're enjoying... Oh, Pettigrew! My homeboy! Johnston Pettigrew is my man. I really like him. Mainly because he's a, he's a scholar. He's, he was an intellectual. Pettigrew... You are a god among men. Alright, I'm going to take personal command of his brigade. I'm going to commit him right here. I'm going to deploy him into line. And he is going to help Archer. Actually, I'm going to put him back a little bit. And I'm going to align him to the left a teeny tiny bit. So he doesn't get stuck on these rocks. I'm going to order his troops to use the roads. I don't think I have to order him to go at double time. No, I don't think I do. And our artillery has already cleared the roads, so we don't have to worry about anything getting in the way. I'm going to move Heath a little bit further over here. Does that mean Brockenbro came up as well? I don't know. I'm going to have to cycle through my commanders. That's my artillery. Pettigrew. Davis. Okay, so we haven't got Brockenbro. It's entirely possible that you can get Brockenbro and Pettigrew to come up. Historically, they didn't. So this... Um, well, they did, but not at this particular point in time. Uh, so the battle, well, skirmish, that happens here ends rather inconclusively. But we've got Pettigrew up. Pettigrew is an amazing commander. He's not a, uh, a West Pointer. He was a very amateur commander, but he was very good at uh, picking terrain and fighting well. He takes part in Pickett's Charge and dies a few days afterwards, unfortunately, though. So his, uh, his career is cut rather short, but he will make up for the fact that uh, Davis over here doesn't really fight all that well. So we're going to move these two regiments up a little bit. I could have sworn that Davis had four regiments, but I could be wrong. It has happened before. Anyway, updates. 
<laughs> so we made it to 2,000 subs. I mentioned that. Woohoo. Um, somebody has asked, well, a lot of people have asked, actually. Oh, God. Are they okay? When they spread out like that, I get a little bit worried, because it usually means they're about to run, and I would rather they didn't. But this artillery on the other side of the railway cut, that's a problem. We might try to send the 42nd Mississippi across to clear it out. Although, if, uh, if Pettigrew hurries up enough, we might be able to just use him. And Brockenbro has arrived, there he is. Brockenbro has a very, very small brigade, but it's useful because we can put it on to the left of, uh, of Davis up here, and we won't have to worry as much. So I'm going to take command of his brigade as well. I'm micromanaging a lot. There are scenarios where you will command a corps or even an army, and you will not want to do that. You will want to give orders to your commanders and let them just do their own thing. They'll figure it out as they go. In this particular case, because our command is relatively small, it's only about 8,000 men. Ooh, even less. I thought it was about 8,000. Perhaps that's the, uh, the starting strength at the beginning of the campaign. Anyway, I keep getting distracted. <laughs> I keep getting distracted by all this cool stuff happening. And I'm going to just move the 55th North Carolina a little bit further up. I don't want to provoke these two units. I just want to start them off. Uh, getting close enough to take out the 147th New York. I haven't seen the Iron Brigade yet, but I know they are coming, because historically they do. Is that Long Soul? Yep, there we go. That's Long Soul Meredith. He commands the Iron Brigade at this point in time. I think he gets relieved of command after getting his though, because he doesn't do so well. Alright, come on, Pettigrew. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Alright, so I moved our cannons up also because uh, the the field of fire they place from this ridge, not so great. It doesn't really work out all that well. They don't suppress very much. And the, uh, the artillery here will wreak havoc on Archer. But now that we've got Pettigrew up to support Archer, we might be able to save most of Archer's brigade and wheel it right so that they can face off against the Iron Brigade in the woods. They're doing pretty well though, usually at this point at least one of Archer's regiments is wrong, in my experience playing this particular camp, uh, this particular scenario. And I think that the 42nd Mississippi is about to break. Yeah, they're falling back, they're not too keen on facing off against the artillery, and frankly, I can't really blame them for that. I wouldn't be too pleased about it either. Luckily, the Second Mississippi should have this 147th New York Regiment under control. Yeah, there they go. All right. So let's move up Davis. Let's move this regiment up a little bit. If the Mississippi, if the 42nd Mississippi reforms, I might send them charging straight down the railway cut. to take out that artillery. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to order them forward. They might not make it. That's something you have to be aware of. Ordering a uh, <laughs> ordering a unit to do something as stupid as charging artillery that might have canister may not work out so well. Alright, there's the Iron Brigade. They're coming up now. Is that a unit of the Iron Brigade or is that one of mine? Nope, that is the Iron Brigade. Second Wisconsin. So the 14th Tennessee is probably going to get slaughtered, but Pettigrew is moving up into line now. He's moving up right here. He should be okay. I'm going to let him do his own thing. I'm going to send him a message. I'm going to go, Pettigrew, my homie, if I can find your unit. There we are. Pettigrew, my homie, I want you to attack the enemy to your front. I'll leave it to you. Pettigrew is a very aggressive commander. He will sweep the field if he can. If he can't, well, then nobody really could. <laughs> At least not in this particular scenario. Pettig Pettigrew is basically our best chance. That canister and artillery, not a good thing. So let's see. I want to send the 11th, for uh, the 11th forward. I want to see if we can grab those guns. So if we can take those guns and turn them. Or even if we just drive them back by charging towards them. I'm going to do it with the, with the 42nd Mississippi as well. I'm going to send them into charge. They might not make it, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather they try. 
Yeah, the 11th North Carolina has taken a few casualties in that. But they have reached the guns and canister didn't wipe them out, so... Yeah, they captured the gun. Alright, capture the other one. Can you do it pretty please? Pettigrew's Brigade is one of the largest in Heath's entire command, so that's why I sent him straight up the middle, straight into the hard charging. Alright, so, updates. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I keep getting engrossed in this game. Oh god damn, that, that hurt a lot. That hurt a lot. But we captured the guns, so that is a positive thing. Anywho, updates. So, as I mentioned earlier, I am back at uni. I'm currently beginning the semester, and so that has meant that I've had to put making videos on hold a little bit, mainly because I want to do well. <laughs> I'm going to university and I'm paying a lot for it over here in Australia, so I want to make sure that I do well in it. Otherwise, what's the point? Uh, that does not mean that I will not make videos, though. I will definitely continue to make videos. I'm just going to make uh, things that are particularly long and difficult to make, like more videos, which you wouldn't think are particularly long and difficult, but when you have to do a write-up and then you have to find the time to do the script, all that other stuff, it does add up a little bit. Oh, the 42nd Mississippi got so close, and yet, and yet, but that's okay. The second Mississippi should be able to suppress those guns. I'm gonna move these guys up, and our own artillery is helping out now, so we're okay. And Brock and Bro is coming. I might get him to hustle it up, though. Ah, there we go. So Davis has finally figured out who he's actually facing. It is infantry to our front, and the Black Hat Brigade is to the south. They are flying the colors of the 1st Division, 1st Corps, Army of the Potomac. They are not yet in great numbers, a quick push may decide the issue. It might. Fortunately, because we got Pettigrew up, we don't have to worry too much about that. I'm going to command his troops as well, just a little bit to move over this way. Archer hasn't gone down yet, which surprises me. Archer is usually gone by now. It could be that we just haven't got the message yet. Let's cycle through. No, Archer's still here. I wonder if it's possible, if you move quickly enough and you don't order him into an assault, to keep him from being captured. I've never done it, but I suppose it might be possible. I don't know. Well, I'll let Archer do his own thing anyway. He's, he's got the situation under control. So, I will be making more lore videos, do not fear. They're just taking a little bit longer to make because, well... I haven't got as much time as I'd like. I'd love to be able to just dedicate you know, my life to... <laughs> okay, well that's a little bit strong. I'd love to be able to dedicate as much time as I needed to make all these videos in a very, very quick and timely manner. But unfortunately, it is not the case. I do not have as much time as I would like. Oh, we destroyed the artillery. We drove it off. Good, good, good. That means Davis... You can wheel your brigade, or what's left of it, rather and take out this. All right, there we go. And I am gonna order Brock and Bro to speed himself up. I'm gonna order him to move over there, deploy into line, wheel it right. Mm, yeah, that'll do. Deploy into line and double time. So his troops are going to be fairly tired by the time they arrive because they are going to be going at the double quick, but I'd rather have them go at the double quick, get their tired, and drive those people off of that field because then we can take the objective at McPherson's farm. Very important. Hopefully this will keep recording. I'm really hoping that it will. I clicked out of the window, bad things have turned by. So as I said, I would like it if I could do as much of the, uh, the video making as I wanted, but unfortunately I do have assignments to complete things to do, work to be done. It's unfortunate, but there it is. But videos are coming. I've actually almost finished the next write-up. It's Skaven. You guys will love it. I love the Skaven. They're fantastic. I also want to talk about future projects. Uh, in the future, I am going to put up a LP of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. I've actually already started it. I've recorded the first four episodes at this current point in time. It's going quite well, actually. <laughs> I do love the game, I love the original uh, feel of Splinter Cell. I know, it's not the actually 
in the original game, it's the third one in the series, but you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Um, also on the list of projects that I would like to do, I might want to move this artillery up a little bit further, actually. In fact, I am. I'm going to move you up closer. Because the Iron Brigade is going to probably drive Archer off. Although, for some reason, they've only engaged with the first two regiments in the line. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> if they don't want to engage me with everything they've got, I'm okay with that. This artillery, can you can you even fire? Are you firing? The unit is resting. Okay, they're out of range. Um, there's not really any good artillery ground, though. I'm going to move them over to this field. I don't know exactly what it's a field of, but that's where they'll go. Yes. There we go. Problem solved. And Brock and Bro's men are coming up on the flank of Davis. Beautiful. Ah. Oh. Shepard regrets to inform us that General Archer has been captured. The French Royal Black Hats are buzzing around those woods like a swarm of bees. Damn it, Sam Shepard. Why? That shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm going to order the 52nd Carolina to move over here. It's the 52nd North Carolina. North and South Carolina are two different things. I don't think I actually have any South Carolinian troops in this particular scenario. It's possible that I do and I just haven't noticed. So, as I was mentioning, future series, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, very exciting, I love the game, it's fantastic. I am in the process of recording the, well, I'm not right this second, but I'm practicing the fifth level. It's a very complicated level, I, I like it, but at the same time I don't. But you guys will probably enjoy the series. It's, a, it's an Iron Man series, so I'm doing every mission in one go, no quick saves. Very cool. I uh, recommend that if you like that sort of style, you go watch Lethal Feline's series of it, because he did the same thing, and it was amazing. Also on the list of things to be done, Hammer and Sickle. Hammer and Sickle is the kind of maligned cousin of... Um... You know what? I want Aunt Brockenbro to move a little bit further over there. Wheel to the right, as you did before. And then... Left flanky unit. Nah, damn it. I need to order it again. Right there. Wheel, right. Wheel right a little bit more. That's better. There we go. And do it at the double time, because you've got a very small brigade, but they'll be able to help out. Will you guys please break? The 95th New York are being very irritating and staying where they are. I do not like it. Not one bit. But we've pretty much got this scenario in the bag. Once you get Pettigrew and Brockenbro up, you've pretty much got it. There's not really a way you can lose unless you play exceptionally badly. And Grandy, I'm going to move you and your artillery up a little bit more too, just to provide extra fire support. We are going to send Davis across the railway cut this way. I'm probably just going to place him on this ridge. I might even place him on this side of the railway cut and just have him provide suppressing fire. I do not know yet. I don't want you guys to get in too far ahead. Because if I remember correctly, there is... Yeah, there's more troops in that tree line. We don't want to, we don't want to attack them. That would be bad. Also on the list, as I was saying, Hammer and Sickle, it's the much maligned cousin of Silent Storm. It takes place in the same universe, and it has the same engine. But um, there's a few things that are different about it. Mainly that I'm actually going to detach you from Pettigrew. And I'm going to get Pettigrew, and I'm going to order him to move his troops here. Pettigrew, would you please listen? I want you to move your troops there and form line. Thank you kindly. And I want you to wheel 
hold that line right there. Alright, cool. There's a captain in charge of Archer's Brigade. I'm not entirely sure how that came to be, but it did. And we move you over there. And Heath. You can jump up with Pettigrew. Alright. Cool, cool. Did we drive those damn people off of that place? Yes, we did. Alright, Brockenborough. I want you. Form line. Wheel it left. Hold it right there. Wheel it left again. There you go. Now you've got it. And Davis, I want you over there. Wheel. Hold that line. Perfect. And we'll just get Brockenborough to hurry his ass up. Because we don't need them to be particularly well rested, we just need them to hold this point for a few moments so we can get enough points to uh, then go forth and capture the first and fire. Cool, cool. Awesome. So we've taken possession of the field. Brockenborough will hold our flank. He shouldn't break because I'm not going to order him to advance. I'm going to actually order him to hold his present position at all costs. Hold to the last. Alright, cool. So, as I was saying, <laughs> Hammer and Sickle, much maligned cousin, takes place in the same uh, universe, but no Panzer Clines, which makes it a lot better. It is a spy game, primarily, and it's very dialogue heavy. It can be very dialogue heavy, depending on which of the endings you end up getting. There are so many. You thought Alpha Protocol had lots of endings? Nah. Nah, you ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to oblique left and move to fill in this gap. Archer's Lord are holding off the Iron Brigade very well though. There's only 20 odd minutes left of the scenario. And the fact that the Iron Brigade is pretty much stuck, I, d I don't really see that happen all that much. I'm pleased, but I don't generally see it. Alright, cool. Oh, awesome. So we've already begun the capturing of this place. Pettigrew's Brigade is holding. And I'm going to move Heath up to join Pettigrew's lot. Go forward. Go forward, old Harry. Cool. And our artillery is now laying down covering fire, or well, suppressive fire, on the Iron Brigade. And Brockabro is holding the ridge. I might advance him just a little bit. Teeny tiny bit. Just so that he's anchoring Davis's line. But not enough to start a fight with those guys in the tree line. I don't want to do that. There we go. Now you're doing it. So you only need 4,000 points, that's what these are down here, to get the major victory. We'll probably end up with about 6,000 odd, depending on how lucky, uh, how lucky we get with holding off the Iron Brigade. Um, Pettigrew, I actually want you wheel to the right. And I'll detach this unit. Just have them form a line. Yeah, form a line hold. There we go. So the Iron Brigade is going to do a lot of damage to Pettigrew's, whoa, Pettigrew's Brigade, but uh, we've, we've taken the point. Essentially. Feel right. Form that line. Perfect. His individual regiments are large enough to uh, to hold the victory point. You need a certain amount of men within range of the victory location. Luckily, Pettigrew has a massive, massive brigade, so he's able to do it all by himself. I'm going to turn Davis's unit around. I'm not going to engage. I'm going to turn that particular regiment, and I'm going to bring this one over here. Beautiful. Damn good ground. Damn great ground. Oh, hello. They used canister on you, didn't they? Probably. <laughs> that's that's not good. 
Could be worse, though. The point is, it could be worse. And we've still stalled the Iron Brigade, which is very important. So Hammer and Tickle is a game that I have been looking at playing. It'll probably be a very short playthrough because, well, if you want to get the good ending, and there's a ton of them, you need to play kind of sensibly. But I will probably, if you guys enjoyed the original playthrough, play through it again and get the you start of World War 3 ending, which is just as good. I enjoy that one. It's still fun. It's just... I'd like to do it right the first time, because the only other LP of the game on YouTube that I found played it very badly, and ended up with the you start of World War 3 ending. So I thought I'd show something a little bit different. Uh, third game on the list of things that I'm going to do and have plans for, have uh, started the recordings for, etc, etc, is Grand Ages Rome Augustus. I haven't actually started the recording for it, but I have gone through and made sure everything works, loaded up our old character, and played through a little bit of the first scenario. I haven't finished it though, so we don't have any special advantages from the last time that we played Grand Ages Rome. I also want to address the fact that I haven't been able... Actually, before we do anything, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. You can speed up time, so you don't take... Uh, long playing through a scenario, like if you know you've got a one. I'm going to actually advance you, second Mississippi, over here and see if we can't take out those guns. Who's this? Albert Hauser. Oh, Reynolds is dead, I forgot about that. And that's Wadsworth. He commands the division that Cutler and Meredith are in, if I remember rightly. You know what? Just charge that damn position. Charge those damn guns, please. Come on, take him. Take him. If we can take those guns... Oh! No! Second Mississippi. Damn it. Ah, well. It was a forlorn hope anyway, but I was thinking perhaps if we were lucky we might be able to take out those guns. Or turn them on the Iron Brigade and fire canister at point blank range. That would have been cool. So, uh, one thing that I want to address, because a lot of people have gone, Hey, you played Mark of Chaos finally, you did it again, are you going to play Battle March? No, because I haven't been able to get hold of it. Not even through that wonderful place that we on the internet know is piracy. Yar. Um, <laughs> there's just no way to get it, as far as I can tell. Which is a shame, because I hear good things about it. If you do want to see a playthrough of it, though, there is a guy called Sir Cypher, he played through it, I would recommend that you watch his playthrough. It is fantastic. It's great. He knows quite a bit about what he's talking about. So that is where I would recommend you go. What? Oh, 42nd Mississippi. Of course. You know what? You guys come over here too. There's not really much point. I mean, we've already won it. Ooh, they're shaken? Really? I guess maybe they're under fire. Maybe they're the guys that the artillery is targeting. I, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to place them in the railway cut rest there. I don't know if they'll actually regain enough morale to make it worth it, but eh, why not? And unlimber these guns, damn it. How, how come you have not been firing? Right, fine. Put them over there, then. And turn them so that we fire across at the Iron Brigade. So what is this? Is this Archer's guy? Yeah, Archer's Brigade has actually survived this relatively intact. I'm surprised, actually. Usually Archer's Brigade is completely and utterly smashed by the time you, uh... By the time you get up to supporting him in any meaningful fashion. So, as you can see, we've completely and utterly blasted the 4,000 points that we needed. But yes, as I was saying, no Battle March for me, unfortunately. If one of you lovely people can point, a, you know, point to a way where I can get it, and if it's illegal, don't mention it in the comments. But if you guys can point out a way for me to actually get the game, I would happily play it. I enjoy Mark of Chaos. It's a lot of fun for me. But I don't think I can. Unfortunately. Which is a shame. But so Cypher, check out his videos. They were amazing. He uh, actually made a thread on the Something Awful forums. Oh my. Well, that's not good. <laughs> um, he made a thread on the Something Awful forums. But that's behind a paywall. Luckily, the videos are free to view on YouTube, so I would recommend heartily that you check them out. He's very informative about the game. It's uh, it's refreshing, actually. The... Oh, hello. Oh, if you fire with canister right on their flank, I will... Oh. Okay, nope. That was, 
That was Archer's Brigade finally giving up the ghost, but major victory, we scored 7,286 points. We did good, and I really hope that I was recording that whole thing, because if it wasn't, I'm going to be a very sad panda. Because that was fantastic, that's probably the best that I've done in this entire... Uh, in the entirety of the times that I've tried playing this. So, long story short, for this update video, we made it to 2,000 subs, woo, you guys are great. Little videos are coming, I'm just putting university and work and all that sort of stuff first, because this is great, but it's just a hobby. I have responsibilities. Future series, I have stuff planned, you will hopefully enjoy it. I know I'm enjoying making it, so if I'm enjoying making it, hopefully you guys will enjoy watching it. And this is Scourge of War Gettysburg. I will show you guys the battle details, because you can actually look at how well you did. And the black bars that are going to appear on the side of the video here, the battlefield is rendered in 1920 by 1080. You can't do that with the menu, unfortunately. I'm not entirely sure why. So Archer is dead. He wasn't captured. He's dead. But we took 1,000 casualties. Well, almost 1,100. The enemy took 1,000 pretty much on the nose. We did pretty well, though. We did very well. We've got 4,708, uh, 4,763 of the 7,272 men that he started the day with. We didn't have all of them, so I'm guessing that he had a unit or two in reserve. And how did we do? Switch to the US commander. So Meade wasn't actually on the field, he wasn't commanding. John Reynolds was commanding. Reynolds is dead, though. Um, out of the total troops that he had to commit, he lost 205? That seems wrong. Maybe don't... Ah, it only counts when he was in command, I guess. And Wadsworth. Wadsworth is the guy who was in command of the guys that we were facing. Solomon Meredith is alive. He and his Iron Brigade actually did pretty well. Cutler is dead. Cutler is dead, and he lost... I don't know how much of his force he lost, but he lost a fair bit of it. He didn't do so great. And Lee wasn't there, obviously. Hill is our direct commander, but he wasn't there either. Harry Heath has had a good day. Today, we have changed the history a little bit. Gettysburg's first day, when he starts the general engagement, isn't as much of a failure because Pettigrew and Brockenbrook came up. Luckily for Heath. <laughs> so, I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next LP video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this update video. I enjoyed making it. I know I got distracted a little bit by the game, but... It's a lot of fun. I love this game. I probably will do a few videos on scenarios from it. There's one fantastic one, which I love, and hopefully you will as well, that involves what if Stonewall Jackson didn't die at Chancellorsville. So that might be a thing that I do in the next couple of weeks. Anywho, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video that I make. Grey Hunter signing out. You 2,000 odd lovely people. You're fantastic. You make my day. <laughs>